Welcome back, fellow space hunters! Today, I hope to finish exploring the Hydro Station. We'll start by heading left across this collapsed bridge. There is one last cave back here for us to explore. That door is locked. We'll ignore it for now. Here's another one of those weird Chozo sculptures. Well, the high jump boots allow us to reach this ledge and access another Metroid breeding ground. You can get back here with bomb jumps, but I don't recommend coming here without the high jump boots in the various suit anyway. You'll see why. Here's something for us to come back to later. Nothing over here, though. There's a Metroid in here. Here, Metroid, Metroid, Metroid. There she is! This one isn't even trying to dodge. Ugh, I almost feel bad. She didn't even put up a fight. Well, no matter. Two remain. I don't think there's anything else in this room. There is an item in this one. Eh, I'll come back to it. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Found ya! Seems that this one can dodge. Well, you should all know the drill by now. The alternating fire method works. Do be careful, though. Alpha Metroids at this stage like to occasionally wind up and charge at you. Yeah, kind of like that. Thank you for demonstrating. You are an excellent volunteer. I'm gonna keep moving. Play the field a little. I'm not just gonna plant my boots in one place. That went pretty well. Got all my energy back, and I still have over a hundred missiles. We're still in fighting shape. the mini-map. Make sure we got the whole room. Good. There's one more to go. More collapsing blocks. I'll have to mine those on the way back up. <clears throat> These platforms are tiny. Okay, you Metroid. Time to take your medicine. Your daily recommended allowance of high explosives. Open wide! I managed to hit that one off screen. Ouch. It may look like I'm having trouble, but imagine how much more difficult this fight would be without the high jump boots. I don't even think traversing this room would be possible. Without the various suit, falling down into those tendrils would mean losing a lot more health. Heed my advice. Always grab those two upgrades before heading in here. Well, that seemed to be the last of them. And, huh, no earthquake this time. All right. Whoa! There was one more! They're evolving!
Samus needs to recalibrate those energy pattern scanners. This one was right nearby, and we didn't pick it up until we were right under its nose. Well, this was around the time these Metroids started showing up in the original version. Like her smaller sisters, this one does occasionally dodge, so the alternating fire method will still work. Mind your dodging, though. The ceiling in this room is a bit low, and this is a rather big enemy. To strike at its weak point, you have to get below it. So bad. That was a Gamma Metroid. Metroids at this stage can now transfer negative charges from its nerve. Its nervous system? We're referring to Metroids plural, right? It should be Metroids at this stage can now transfer negative charges from their nervous system into their horns, releasing electric arcs capable of disrupting weapon fire. The membrane containing its nucleus remains vulnerable. The Gamma Metroid's exoskeleton has expanded for additional protection. Although its legs have reached their maximum length, they are unsuitable for locomotion. Instead, they can serve to capture prey and drain their energy. Well, I'm glad it didn't grab hold of us, then. <clears throat> There's an earthquake. And if this is anything like the last two, then the magma should have lowered again. Oh, before I forget, one of the trickiest items in the game is in this room. Bet you didn't know you could pass through that block, huh? Bomb this section of the wall, and boom! Energy tank! That should bring you up to four. So remember when I said it's impossible to sequence break in Metroid 2? It's because the magma prevents you from traveling deeper underground prematurely. Metroid 2 is one of the more linear games in the series for exactly that reason. I still have a fair amount of missiles. I could always get some more, though. Just gun down some of these Samori for them. Just about done with Hydra Station. There's one more thing we have to explore. Gun down these shoot leeches for ammo. That's C H U T E, by the way, not S H O O T. Shooting is what we do to the shoot leeches. So, remember that entrance in the roof that I suggested coming back to later? I think we're ready now. There's a save station here. Eh, I don't need to save. I'll be fine. Another red door! Hey, the door's locked! Uh-oh. Oh, yes. Those of you who have played Metroid Fusion might recognize this particular monster. Those of you who have played Metroid 2 might also recognize this particular monster. That's where it first appeared. This is Arachnus. It's completely invulnerable to beams and missiles, especially when it rolls up. It won't do anything other than annoy it. So how do you damage this creature, then? Well, if you've beaten this mini-boss in the original version, then you'll know that it has a certain weakness to bombs. 
lay a few in its path, bounce it up to those spikes, and booyah! Fun fact, I've never actually beaten this creature in the original Game Boy version. I had a little trouble with it the first time I encountered it and resolved to come back to it later, and then I just never did. It is an optional boss, after all. I could probably do it easily now. Unload a few missiles right into your face. Point blank range. Okay, now we're rolling again. Bounce it up there, and zap! So the music that they're using for this boss is a remix of the uh, theme that you hear when fighting it in Metroid Fusion. That's a neat callback. Well, I guess it's a call forward in Samus's case, since Metroid Fusion is technically last in the Metroid canon. I am not good at dodging those green fireballs. I don't mind admitting that. I'm not ashamed. I'm taking way too much damage, though. Not really paying attention. Okay, just a few more bombs. Bounce it up high enough, and zap! That's the end of Arachnus! I left something shiny for us. Neat! It's the Spring Ball. Press 3 in Morph Ball mode. We'll try that out in a sec. First, let's read up on Arachnus. Should be down here under Hostiles. There it is. Arachnus. A territorial organism. Its armored hide is very resilient, and requires at least a high voltage discharge to harm it. Attacking with anything less will only agitate the creature. When enraged, it will roll into a ball and attempt to ram its aggressor. Bombs might be able to propel it in this state. Its saliva has flammable properties, and its claws can vibrate at high frequencies to launch sonic waves. Scans detected has acquired a Chozo relic, granting it unnatural vigor. Sometimes the writing in this game trips over itself, but when it's good, it is good. So thanks to the Spring Ball, we can now jump in Morph Ball mode. It's an optional upgrade, but it's very nice to have. Who needs to walk? We could just roll and bounce all over the place. So with that, I think we're done with Hydro Station. At least for now. Time to move on. So the magma isn't in this chamber anymore. That means the next area should be open. But remember, we made a mental note to come back to this room. Now that we have the high jump boots, we can easily traverse this room and grab another missile tank. Let's hit the road. I had to nuke that nest. I couldn't help myself. Morph Ball really is ideal for traversing these narrow passages. Oh, there's an easily overlooked uh, missile tank right here. Just jump to the right of those spikes. It's uh, above that rock that looks like a pickle slice. What? That's what it looks like to me. It's even green. Scanning environment. Energy pattern scan. Ten Metroids detected in the area. Are we sure this time? There aren't any extras that are going to surprise us? Well, I guess we'll find out in the next episode. We'll be exploring Area 3. Hope to see you then!